What's up, gamers? What's up, football fans? I have I had the most brilliant idea last night. This is what I'm going to do this week. I'm going to do extreme digital house cleaning, and you're going to watch, and you're going to you're actually going to learn a lot from this. Uh, like I've thought about the. Uh, let me tell you what I'm going to do. Okay, GitHub. I don't know. Maybe you don't even. Maybe you're on this channel and you don't even know what GitHub is. So you you have Git repositories there. You have software projects, and the thing about GitHub is. People can create issues, like if something's wrong with a software project, they can make issues. And, you know, you can go and try and solve them, fix them. They can have pull requests, you know, they, they can suggest things to change about your software. And I maintain a bajillion little software projects here. I'm going to go through, actually I have a little file here, let me take my face with me. Um, I have a little file here, and the thing is, I've had a lot of these projects that I just kind of manage, and uh, for, for years, but... Although I try to keep up, I haven't like made it an issue to solve every issue, so, you know, get every single pull request. So here is actually a table of all the different repositories. And I, my, oh, actually, I should say this before I even start. Okay, actually, <laughs> go to my website and send me fake internet money. Send me money, okay? Because li I do it for free. I'm like a Janny. I do. I maintain all these stupid projects that thousands of people use. Uh, and I don't get paid for it. So give me literally this is oh, that's e-begging. No, it's not e-begging I've already done the work. Give me some money uh, <laughs> Unironically um, But aside from that, so what I'm gonna do in this video what I'm doing this week is my goal is to close every single issue Solve everything. Hey, b just basically stop Trying to like, you know, I don't want to tread water anymore. I just want to get rid of all these things That's what I'm doing this week. And as you can see, I actually have a lot of issues in PR Okay, I, I'm thinking about how to break this video up. I'm probably going to be recording, this is going to be a marathon. I'm going to be recording like all this week until I get all this done. Maybe I can finish it like by Wednesday or something like that. I don't know, some of this stuff might be easy, some of it might be hard. But let me show you, and this is actually, if you're new to this channel, in this video, I'm going to overview very briefly what all of these software projects do uh, and how they can be useful to people. And... Um, and then I'll talk. I'll kind of assess the problem, assess the kind of things that I'm have to, gonna have to do this week. And I think I'll break this video up by like topic or software project. And you also get a lot of behind the scenes things, like what annoying things, like I have to put up with. Uh, oh, what what's this stupid? You know, why do I hate Proton Mail so much? Well, it's because of the stupid things I have to deal with in Mutt Wizard. Or why do I hate? You know, there there are a bunch of things that you will you will learn about that. And also for those normies watching for who know me in real life, okay, when you ask me, oh, I haven't seen you in the past week, Luke. What have you been doing? This is the stupid stuff I've been doing, like this kind of stuff. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get this all behind me. I'm gonna solve. I'm gonna be up to date. A lot of these issues and pull requests, or when we look at them, they're they're gonna be like two years old, okay? And actually, that's not even weird for an open source project where someone is not getting paid to do stuff. Like, if they don't, um, you know, if if like, if if it's not a critical failure, you might keep putting it off. And I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm, I'm gonna we're gonna solve things. We're gonna clean things up today. Digital housekeeping. All right. So let's talk about the different projects that I maintain and what they do, okay? So the first two, and these were like, these are kind of the same project, kind of different. Um, one of the first things that happened when I started doing Linux videos is people were like, wow, your like setup is cool. How do I get like, uh, you know, an environment? Like, like how do I install all that my, on my computer? And I decided against hand-holding. Instead, what I did is I'm gonna give you a script and what the script does, and it's actually called LARBS, which is a very stupid name that I've, I've thought about changing because it just sounds so dumb. And I might want to like turn it into a real distribution kind of thing. But what it is, is if you install Arch Linux, or now it works on Artix Linux too, because that's what I use, um, you can just run these two commands that just pulls the script from the LARBS website. And what that does is it sets up a, it, it sets up basically what you see in my videos that I use it has that desktop environment and installs all of the requirements. And uh, it really is a desktop environment. It's not just a window manager because it's everything that I use. And the reason I orig originally did that is when I was first learning how to use Arch Linux, 
I was installing it over and over and over again because I was fixing problems. I didn't know like what I had to wipe the system for. Well, you, really nothing, but I was like reinstalling it a bunch of times and I wanted to make it easy on myself, uh, setting up what I want and keeping what I want persistent. And so that's what the LARB script is. But what the LARB script does is it actually pulls this um, repository here called void rice, which is basically my dot files. It's my configuration files. Um, so this is the kind of stuff like the LARB script pulls this down. Oh, and by the way, LARB stands for Luke's Auto Rice Bootstrapping Script. It's kind of arbitrary. Like I want, I, I really just like saw the the fat Arch Linux meme, and I was like, oh, I want to, I want to use that as my logo. Like, oh, LARBs. That sounds like a fat word. You know, that that was like literally my thinking, and then I kind of made up an acronym for it. It's very stupid. And I actually really have come to hate the word rice because I don't really do ricing. Like, I've never tried to make my desktop look pretty. I mean, maybe it does to a normie, but there are people who are serious about configuration, like ricing that like theirs looks infinitely better than mine. I just, so I just want to say that I kind of disavow this word I, and I might rename this to, again, I might rename this to like, I, I don't know. I have no clue, but, um, and make it a little more normie friendly instead of having this like kind of goofy looking site and, you know, kind of make it in a real distribution. But maybe I'll, I'll be thinking about that once I solve all the problems. Um, so void rice is, and it, it's called void rice because originally when I made this repository, I was using void Linux and not arch. Um, there's a brief period where I, I was using void and this is just the configuration files. So if you go to config, like these are, these are all the configuration files for all the programs that I use. I don't know, newsboat and, and, and like shell scripts and stuff like that. And, uh, XX, SXIV, like all these kind of things. I've actually slimmed this down. I used to have a lot of other programs. Uh, you know, I got LF, uh, but I used to keep old stuff like Ranger and I, I now I kind of delete stuff that I don't use anymore and keep it more minimal. Um, but this is what LARBs installs. And of course it installs a bunch of programs as well. So um, these issues, uh, I, I think void rice, the issues are going to be pretty easy. The, the PRs and issues, like I can probably uh, test that all pretty well. The thing about LARBs though, is I'm probably gonna have to bust out a computer and like do bug testing, like reinstall Arch on a computer like a, that I'm not using, but you don't really have a computer that I'm not using, so I don't know. Um, so I may need to like reinstall Arch multiple times to like fix these issues depending on what they are. I haven't really looked at the issues, I just tallied them up uh, for this purpose. Um, we can probably, I don't know, I can probably like go ahead and click on them and see what there is. Um, oh, and the other thing is like people, because LARBs and uh, void rice are kind of like in the same category people will open issues on the wrong one like LARBs is just the script that installs stuff all the configuration is on void rice but people get them confused like i don't know um so there are a bunch of little problems oh and by the way no i'm gonna i'm gonna save my complaints i have a bunch of things to say about arch and uh, like the artix linux uh like how artix linux like changes stuff all the time and they break this script uh, i mean it, it's not like their responsibility to keep my script from breaking it's mine um uh, but it's kind of annoying that they change a lot of stuff i mean they're still like a developing distro uh, and i have some opinions about that um so anyway that's that and i will say i'm going to skip down so these two these are very important uh landchad.net and base.cooking so these are like two websites i maintain um, but landchad.net is actually, I'm, it's going through a, a, uh, I don't know, a face shift, like a fa face shift, face lift, right? So I've already, um, I just redid this in Hugo, um, and also base.cooking is now in Hugo as well. And I think I did a video, like, um, I don't think I actually uploaded it to YouTube. I should probably do that, but, uh, it is much more easy to use. Like it's more normie friendly. You can just put stuff in here and it works. Uh, this, both of these are sites. Base.cooking is just supposed to be a minimalist website for recipes because I was complaining about it the other year. Uh, so we just kind of, this is like a Git based, I mean, people submit Git pull requests and I, sub, you know, accept recipes and you can, it's just like super minimalistic. Um, everything is really like, you know, there's no, I, I guess, bloat or blogging or whatever in the stuff. That's the point of base.cooking. Not really, a, I mean, it is a software project, but it's not like about technology. It's just like a public service. Um, and I recently redid this in Hugo just to make it easier. And I recently redid landchad.net in Hugo as well. This is like for tech tutorials for people who are installing their own services. So it has stuff like, oh, you want to install your own Twitter-like site? Oh, well, there's Pleroma or PeerTube is like a YouTube equivalent. Or it gives like general, you know, there are a couple articles on just like basic server stuff. 
search NG for search engine matrix for a chat, you know, even there's an article on Monero and stuff like that. Git ser having a Git server. So um, this too is, I redid it in Hugo just because it's like easier to maintain. Uh, but if you look, uh, these are these are actually going to be pretty hard. Like I, I kind of expect so far, these are going to be the most difficult things to like close all the PRs and issues for. Um, I, obviously, you can see I have 109 PRs. Um, uh, you could probably make a joke about that number, uh, but, but uh, that's just people submitting recipes. And the issue is they submitted recipes before I switched over to Hugo. So a lot of these like. People opened these like two years ago. If I tell them to update them, they probably won't. I might just unceremoniously close a lot of these. Um, but in terms of issues, basically, I, I had a bunch of open like problems with the site. And when I switched over to Hugo, I solved most of those. Uh, Landchad.net is also going to be hard to do because like in the same way for LARBs to like troubleshoot that, I basically have to reinstall Arch on like a computer and it takes some time and it takes internet and I don't have good internet. Um, for landchad.net, I'm basically going to have to solve a lot of these issues. I'll get, I guarantee a lot of them are like, oh, someone, uh, there's some tutorial where something didn't work. Um, I'm going to have, geez, where is it? I'm going to have to like bust open a VPS and, uh, you know, basically install this stuff myself over and over again. And, uh, you know, just trying to figure out what's going wrong. I, I just fixed a, a couple of them the other day. Uh, but this is going to be, I don't know, I feel like this is going to be a little frustrating to solve, but I want to get this done. Um, also in this video, I'm going to talk about why I unceremoniously close stupid pull, re pull requests and, and issues without a comment, which sounds super mean, but I I'm going to explain why I have to do that or, you know, what, what I mean by that. Uh, Lugo, uh, there no issues or PRs on this. This is actually the Hugo thing. I just, th I don't know, I guess it stands for Luke Hugo. It's just the, the Hugo theme that I actually use in my personal website here, uh, and also landchad.net, and also base.cooking. Now, they don't look anything similar to each other, but they're actually all using the same Hugo theme that just allows me to, there are a couple things that it has built into it. Hugo, you just need like some super minimal theme to build off of. Um, but I might be doing stuff with Lugo just to make Lanchad or uh, Base Out Cooking or my own personal website. My own personal website, I don't have this on GitHub. I, I keep it to myself. Um, but I might, um, maybe I should have it publicly available, but I, I'm not quite sure. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, so I might jigger with that as well, uh, Lugo. Now here I have a big list of the different suckless software that I use. Now all of these, when you run the LARB script, it installs all of this stuff here. It installs DWM, with the, which is the min window manager I'm using right now, uh, which is my specific build, which is, you know, super good. Um, if, if anyone wants to know, I, maybe I'll go into it in the video, like the, when I, once I cut it up into parts, uh, but DWM, um, like the, the, my, I'll go ahead and tell you like my, I have a way of doing things that, that's different from most people. And when it comes to like configuring window managers, my technique is every freaking bind here, every key on my keyboard has like a binding to it. Like there, there's some kind of shortcut to it. Um, like a lot of people will keep their keybinds really minimal. I want, if I hold down the super key and I press any key on my keyboard, it that has something. It might pull up my email, might pull up a, a file manager, might pull, you know, it might be a shortcut to sync my email or something. Like everything has a bind. Um, either way, I don't think that DWM, like you don't, you only have a couple, uh, pull requests. Uh, this is definitely not relevant to this. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think these will be easier, mainly because, like, they're not really... These are just forks of other software that's pretty well-maintained. Uh, the only issue I have to deal with all of these is, uh, you know, if, if some patch that I added is screwed up, or, like, someone wants an extra feature, and I'll think about adding it. Um, but uh, all of these are all written in C, which I don't really know... I wouldn't put C on my resume. Obviously, I main, maintain these projects in C, but, like, I always feel like... I just don't know it super well. Um, so I don't do anything too fancy with them. I mostly just add patches. And you don't really have to know C to to uh, figure that kind of stuff out. Um, so again, DWM is the window manager. DWM blocks um, is like... So the status bar up here is part of DWM. But the specific modules up here, that is part of basically DWM... Well, I shouldn't even say that's part of DWM blocks. On my... Um, 
the the file the scripts themselves that give you like the wind the uh, weather and stuff like that that's actually part of void rice uh, but dwm blocks is specifically it's kind of in between the two it like runs scripts and makes them appear in dwm's you know status bar or whatever um that's another thing where people get confused because like uh something will be wrong in void rice or dwm and they'll open it as a dwm blocks issue basically dwm blocks works fine um, ST is the, the, the terminal, which of course is right in front of you, right, you know, right here, uh, which I, you know, it's working fine basically. And D menu, I just have a couple patches just to add in like, uh, you know, color emojis and things like that. Um, but it probably, I don't even know what the issue or PRs would be. Okay. So one of the other big, uh, these two things probably are a significant, they're going to be, I, I guess, a category in themselves, my email stuff. So I have Mutt Wizard and Email Wiz, which are very confusingly named. I, Email Wiz is not like a serious thing. Mutt Wizard, I think, is actually in a couple distributions like um, uh, like repositories now. I, I know that it's in the AUR uh, and some other things as well because it's actually a pretty useful tool. Um, what Mutt Wizard is, uh, I would pull up. I don't have my email configured on this. I could actually use Mutt Wizard to set it up super easy, but I don't have my password manager on this, so I can't really do it. But um, what Mutt Wizard does, actually, there's a the, oh yeah, there's a website now, muttwizard.com. Um, it just sets up instantly. Uh, it, it basically creates a bunch of configuration files by itself for your email account. Could be a Gmail account. Don't use Gmail, but it could be a Gmail account. Could be your personally hosted Gmail. Could be gmx.com. I don't. It doesn't matter what it is. It will set up a terminal-based email client for you that you, using Mutt uh, or NeoMutt, I guess I should say, and it keeps offline email. So I really like having email offline because I delete it on the server that it's on. I don't like it touching the internet. I like having it on my uh, my local machine, and I like keeping archives. And it does a bunch of other automated stuff, like it secures her passwords with Pass and. Um, you know, so it downloads mail. You can all, you can actually use a, a pop server as well, which I think few people use, but you can do that. Um, and so it's just like, a, it's how I've done email for like, well, the reason I made this tool, I should say, is it's like freaking difficult to set up an email client like Mutt the first time you do it. And then it's even more difficult to set it up with like offline email uh, and all this other stuff. So Mutt Wizard basically does a bunch of stuff for you and it gives you sensible defaults. Um, and this is like one of my more popular tools. Again, it's like made it into a couple uh, distros. I, I want to say there's some guy from like Debian emailing me about putting it in Debian, but like I don't think I followed up on that. I probably should. Um, so I'm going to solve these issues too. Uh, but Mutt Wizard has a bunch of unique problems. I'm surprised. Like normally Mutt Wizard will have like hundreds of issues. I think there was one time I remember being in a cafe once. I was like having lunch there and I was just hyped up on caffeine. And I like closed a whole bunch of Mutt Wizard issues that I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I don't feel like I'm gonna have to be able to answer this or whatever. Like, look at all these closed issues. It's been around for a while, I guess. Um, and I'll probably have to get. So I, as I mentioned, Proton Mail is a big problem. Uh, I'll talk about why when I cut this up into a video about uh, Mutt Wizard. Uh, on the other hand, now this is not necessarily related to Mutt Wizard, but it's email related as well. There's Email Wiz, and this is like less of a serious project. It's more like a script for my convenience, kind of in the same way that LARB started out. Um, basically, you can start up a Debian server, run this script, and it will install an email server. <laughs> like it installs everything, it installs Postfix, uh, Dovecot, Spam Assassin, Open DK DKIM. Um, this thing, this script works pretty well, I've realized, but the biggest issue, and probably, I'm going to guess half of these issues, or probably nearly all of these, uh, are going to be non-issues. It's going to be, like, people not following directions, like, people not reading the readme. That is my experience with this, because it's a little complicated, because, like, look at all these requirements, like, you have, oh, uh, my email is being blocked, what do I do? I get that, like, someone will open that issue, like, every week, and I'll just have to say, read the readme. Um, like basically it's all here, but there are probably some there. I know for a fact, there are a couple things I want to change in terms of making this more efficient and making it more robust because when I started it again, it was just super ad hoc and it still very much is. Um, it just works on, oh, it, oh, if you have like a vulture Debian server, it works here. This is what I use it for. So, uh, and of, of course it's also difficult. This is true of Mutt Wizard as well. Actually more true of email Wiz. 
Um, it's kind of hard keeping up with like email protocols and changes to Postfix and Dovecot and like new sh security standards. Like honestly, you have to read very. I like I that is not my expertise. I feel like. But every once in a while, I will have to read up, okay, here's this new way of doing things. I need to understand, like, what is best for how to do this because lots of people are going to be installing email servers based on the script. And, yeah, they're probably just, like, personal email servers, but, you know, whatever. So, either way, this is a project that, um, yeah, is kind of important. D-Menu talked about already. Lugo talked about base cooking, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Shadow Chat, this is someone else's thing um, that I just have a fork of and I've made a couple changes. Uh, this is, like, the Monero Super Chat thing. Uh, very useful. And go web ring. I don't know why I put this here, but this is something I'm working on. I don't, I, this is actually also someone else's uh, Amoleth's uh, uh, software, but I, um, I'm in the. I'm going to use this for my own devices. I've already made some changes to it, but yeah, there are no issues on either of these. Um, and then last but not least, I have some repositories. So KJV, GRB, and Vol. Uh, these are all command line Bibles. And when I say command line Bibles, I mean like actually the Bible. Uh, um, so this is forked from someone else. So Kate, I, I should tell you the story of this. A lot of people think, oh, Luke, you don't answer your emails. That's, that's false. Now I don't answer emails with emails, but I do occasionally act based on the emails. This is true of text. I, w I was having this conversation the other day with someone, uh, on, on me and texting. Yes, I do see your texts. I will basically never respond, but I do see them and I will act accordingly if, you know, they're important. Same way with emails. There's one time this guy, I actually do think I responded to this guy years ago, someone randomly emailed me and said, hey, um, like, could you do like the Bible, like a, a Bible on the command line, right? Do I even have this installed? Actually, I don't even have this installed. Uh, I'm on Arch, right? Um, I'll go ahead and yay it or whatever. Uh, oh, let me, let me actually, okay. I have something to complain about already. Um, so this, uh, so these projects basically, I'll, I'll go ahead and install this, but. Um, these projects basically just, you can put in a Bible verse and it brings it up. KJV is, of course, the King James Bible. Uh, GRB is the Greek Bible. It has the Old Testament as the Septuagint, obviously. If it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. And, um, uh, the New Testament is, the Testament is SBL. And that's just because it was in the public domain or it has some kind of license that allows you to copy it. So, um, and so Vol is the Latin Vulgate, Clementine Vulgate. Um, either way, here's one annoying thing. Uh, AUR managers or AUR whoever, okay? Let me complain about this, okay? Where this project comes from, like KJV originally was someone else's project, all right? Uh, and the reason I forked it is because it didn't have the whole KJV. He removed the Apocrypha. I don't know, maybe he's a Baptist or something. He doesn't, he, uh, like the thing is, the king, what annoys me though, is I forked it, I put back in the Apocrypha. And then when they added this to the AUR, they added my project as... KJV Apocrypha. And I'm going to complain about that for a sec. Now they can't do anything because KJV was already taken, right? Um, but the, the issue with that is, I mean, that, that's like saying, oh, this is the King James Version with the New Testament, right? It, it, the whole thing is the King James Version. Like this should be called King James Version except for one part that I didn't like. That's what it should actually be called. Mine should just be KJV. That That is just my feeling. That's not a personal thing. This is not like, oh, I wish my project like had a more unmarked name. Uh, that is true, uh, but like that's not the, I mean, really it's just annoying. So anyway, how it works, like Genesis, Genesis 1. Okay, so it pops up that, right? Um, so, uh, and then all I did for these other projects is uh, I just replaced the text with the Greek Bible uh, and the, the Vulgate and stuff like that. So they work exactly the same. And it's really this guy's software who removed the Apocrypha. So I can't, I can't complain about it too much. Uh, but one thing people have asked me is if I could integrate them all into one tool, which I guess I could, but I kind of like, well, I, yeah, you'd have to run like an extra option on the command line or whatever, but uh, to, to like get a certain uh, text. But yeah, you could do that, like have one program that does them all. Um, but either way, you don't have many pull requests on this. Like I don't even, I probably don't even look at them. Uh, free BSD compatibility. Okay, yeah. So this this will probably be little little stuff. I might just like put this at the end if I even do this. Uh, so I do have. Okay, I'm getting tired, but I'm also almost done. So <laughs> actually, I shouldn't get tired because the fun has just begun. It's only 9 a.m. Monday morning. So. Um, but yeah, we're, we're about to start working on specific projects. Last and probably least is Vimling. This is just like some language uh, stuff that I have in Vim uh, and just have one issue. I'll see what that is later. 
And then LB, ooh, I need to just like delete this because this, before I used Hugo for everything, um, LB was like the thing that I used. It was like a super small uh, shell script that uh, I used to manage my blog. And I, I was like a firm proponent and I still kind of am in writing everything in pure HTML just because like it's less headache. You, you don't have to like worry about what some stupid markdown converter is gonna do. Uh, but I've given in and I've started to use Hugo just because like there are some edge cases that it can't do well, but in general, like once I started wanting tagging and stuff on my blog, so um, there's a period where I did this kind of tagging stuff, um, but I didn't have like, uh, I don't have any economic stuff now. I need to put some of my old writings on this from like 10 years ago that are kind of cringe, um, which are secret and people don't know about. But um, yeah, and, and I'd be super embarrassed of, I was very Keynesian when it comes to economics. But either way, um, so once I started doing tagging, I had the, the blog script, which I didn't even update, do stuff like that. It was like not backwardsly compatible, but I, I didn't upload it. Uh, here. Uh, but eventually I was like, okay, Hugo does this so much like easier and faster and with less he headache. I just gave in. I re the first, the first, uh, uh, card to fall was actually based out cooking because like everything about its static site generator, it was like broken. And now with like Hugo, it's infinitely better. Oh my goodness. It's so much better. Um, and I know I did a video on converting base.cooking to Hugo, but I don't think I uploaded it to YouTube. Or I think I uploaded it, but I didn't release it. So people on YouTube have not seen that. That's what happens. I'll put stuff up, up on my main, uh, you know, videos.lukesmith.xyz, and I'll forget that I didn't release them from YouTube. I don't know. I think less about YouTube now. I, sh I should. You don't get ad revenue on my own site, but... Anyway, so that is, that's uh, an analysis of the problem. I'm probably gonna start, uh, I'm gonna record right now. I'm gonna upload this video. I'm gonna go ahead and upload this because it's my commitment to actually do this this week. Um, and I'm gonna immediately start recording. And what I'm gonna start on probably is uh, void rice and larbs and all that kind of stuff, fix all these problems. And um, I, I'll talk about the kind of issues that are coming with that. And I will, a lot, again, a lot of the testing for LARBs might, I might have to do later in the week as I get like a computer to do this. But um, yeah, okay, so that's it. That's what I'm going to do. That's what we're doing. I was expecting this intro video to be like five minutes, but there's a lot of crap to talk about. That'll give you a survey. You're going to learn a lot about the kind of stuff that I do for these stupid projects. Uh, thanklessly and without monetary compensation. Um, uh, yeah, I should probably say that with my, uh, you know, donation links in the background. Uh, <laughs> but uh, also the kind of, like, my mindset and, like, how I manage projects, uh, like, open source projects, and, like, some other details. Things that, like, piss me off about, like, I don't, uh, upstream things I have to worry about. So this is going to be very, you're, you'll probably learn some, even though it's going to be, like, like most long videos on YouTube, they're kind of friend simulators, but either way, let's be friends. This is the end of this video.